Welcome to Reread. We're on book three of the Legacy of the Force series. This is written by Troy Denning. It's called Tempest. Uh, at the very beginning, we find out Alima did not die from the Darkness trilogy. I remember this. And I didn't remember how she died. The first time I read through, I was like, oh yeah, did, did, did she make it out alive? No. Pretty much in Darkness, you thought she was dead. It seemed like she was dead. But of course, Troy Denning wrote those books, so he would know. He probably had it planned all along to keep Alima in for this series, too. But she's alive. She has a failed assassination attempt on Jason. I remember all of this clearly. And then she finds out about Lumaya and what Lumaya is doing to Jason. And of course, she wants to help Lumaya because she loves this. And she, even though she's not with the uh, Gorong, the, the joiners anymore, she still talks in third person, we. And uh, anyway, so 3PO, uh, there's some really funny humor from Troy Denning. My favorite one is 3PO tells Han, or 3PO tells someone, he said, that Captain Solo is losing his memory because he told Leia that she, she uh, the other day that she didn't look a day over 35. <laughs> and of course, Luke, Han gives her a scowl. There's a lot of good humor in here and a lot of times I did laugh out loud, but I'd forgotten about that. Uh, now, the uh, Bothan Admiral, I can't remember his name, I didn't write it down, uh, who uh, was uh, in the Attack of the Darkness trilogy where the special bust and the, the collector's things, uh, the, the, the bust of all the important admirals or whatever, uh, came alive and all the bugs sprayed out of him. It was just like the Trojan horse, and they had to fight off all the bugs on the ship. Uh, that admiral, there's a really good scene where he keeps a bust of Akbar, Admiral Akbar there, to hum. It's one of the busts that was, you know, infected with bugs or something like it. And he keeps that to look at himself and humble himself to know that he was the biggest idiot in the world, you know, to fall for that trap. And I really liked that little story about him. I thought it was really good because when I think it's Jaina talks to him and he starts getting prideful again. He looks over at the Akbar statue and then slumps a little bit because <laughs> he knows, no, I'm, I'm still, I, I don't, I shouldn't let arrogance get the best of me like I did in that battle, which I, I loved. I love that. Um, Zek and Jaina decide right here and there they're just going to be friends. I think at this point Troy Denning knew, either they knew automatically it was going to go with Jag, but I really think they tried to make an effort. And I think Troy Denning really tried to make an effort of Zek and Jaina together, which I was all for. But the majority, the masses online were all about uh, Jag and Jaina. Now, whether it was always destined to be or Troy Denning goes, you know what, guys, let's just give up. Because the first few novels, even with Aaron Alston, uh, they talk about how, you know, Luke and Mara, Kid, Han, and Leia saying, hey, you know, Zach's gonna be a, Zach is going to be a future brother-in-law. And how they really, Zach and Jaina rely on each other and everything. And, you know, there's, uh, Jaina questions, you know, we're just friends, aren't we? You know, but here they finally say, no, we're just friends and that's it. So they're kind of parting ways. Because, of course, here comes Jagged Fail. He comes back and makes an appearance, supposedly after he got shot down by Han. And Han, of course, there's, there's a great scene with that. Han goes, oh, sorry about that. But they picked you up, didn't they? He was like, I was stranded there for two years. He's like, oh. <laughs> and I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. And everything's been stripped away from Jack. He's been ostracized from the chess ascendancy and everything, from his own family and everything. So you kind of feel bad for Jack, but don't worry. He's going to get a bigger role later on, I'm pretty sure. Um, they mentioned um, Raynor uh, Thal. Luke mentions that, you know, if Jason is going to the dark side, then he'll be able to turn him back and keep him back. But, Jay, uh, but uh, Mara's like, well, if he falls... You know, you're always about redemption, but it doesn't always work. And she mentions Raynor Thol. He went, well, I mean, he's coming along. In fact, in three more years, he'll probably be, you know, somewhat normal again. And it's funny because I bet he just made that as a joke. It was supposed to be a joke like, oh, yeah, well, Raynor's going to be ready in three more years or whatnot. Uh, but in actuality, we do know that Raynor comes out in the next story arc. And I, I just can't wait to uh, read, read about that again. Um, Aura Singh under the name of, uh, I didn't write down, Natasha or whatever, and you know it's Aura Singh the whole time, uh, encounters uh, Han and Leia. She is, I believe, in her 80s, 84, but of course she has a, she, uh, her alien race can live a lot longer. 
Uh, but they found out that she escaped prison because of a Vong attack. She'd been kept in prison for 50 years or something. And now since the Vong attack, then she was freed. But at the end, Jason's going to capture her. And I guess he puts her back in prison. At least that's what he says he's going to do. And I can't remember what happens to her now. Maybe it's discussed in another book. But it looks like she's going back to prison. I don't remember her being in any of the series going forward. But then again... It's been so long that, you know, I'll be I'll I'll probably be surprised. I don't know, who knows. But Luke does fight L Lamaya in this one and I remember this. It's a nice little battle. She's got her laser whip, he's got his Shotu blade, uh, and she barely escapes. It was a setup by Jason. Uh, Jason wants to throw the trail off of him to Lumia like she's hunting Ben. You know, she's not even worried about me, not Jason solo. She's after your son, Luke. And Luke knows it's a setup. Lumia knows it's a setup. Or Luke and Mar know it's a setup when they get there, even though Jason has an excuse uh, later on as to why it wasn't a setup. Because Ben was supposed to be there, but he didn't go because Jaina, it just so happened that Jaina pulled him away from that mission, so he wasn't exactly there. So then Luke and Mar can't, again, can't accuse Jason of going to the dark side. Now, Jason is, you know, totally gone at this point, I believe. Uh, he orders to, to be, them to fire upon his mom and dad because he thinks at the time that they are traitors. It turns out they're not, you know, and you know, he's kind of shot by that, but oh well. He's not going to remove that warrant against them because they still have to answer for their crimes against the Galactic Alliance. And so, and even, uh, even Tenel Ka is a little surprised by this, that he's so harsh on his parents and everything, even though Jason is a, a hero, you know, uh, to her and everything. And of course, uh, the uh, all the speculation about uh, Alana. No one has seen the daughter. That she has a blemish or deformity. Everyone believes that. Uh, Han and no, no, no. It's Luke and Mara that determines. Hey, do you think that's Jason's kid? And Luke goes, No, because by the time she had him, if you go back, you know, nine months of conception, you know, Jason. Why we know where Jason was. He was with us at that time. So there's no way he saw. Uh, Tenelka by then. And that's exactly what Tenelka wanted to do. That's why she slowed down her pregnancy so it would be harder to trace who the father was. And of course, Mara is a little inkling. She thinks that, you know, Jason and Tenelka have something going on, but Luke just doesn't see it. And I like the false speculation. Not everyone has to know everything. They know, not everyone's Sherlock Holmes who can figure out the crime. You know, you, the reader, know, and you're like, oh, come on, doesn't anyone get it? No. But I like that even some of the smartest Jedi and everything are getting fooled by this. This is not bad at all. Each one of these books have been awesome reads. Uh, real time, I'm reading these in two days um, each. And I'm just enjoying each and every one. It's not like I'm feeling like rushed or I'm feeling bored or I'm having to push through a slog. It's really been great. The first three have been great. And I can't wait to review the next one next time.